For all of you who listen to Submersion and own an Android device, go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I personally use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcast I want to listen to, select it as a favorite, and have it just a click away. Make sure you select Submersion as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes every Thursday. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. Episode 93. Woo! Woo! And once again, we are without our fearless leader, but you know what? Usually we make fun of him. We're like, he has a little child in his arms, or he's just being a big old lame or he gave, thought the movie was too good and was embarrassed. We don't need him. Uh, but we don't need this him. time it's actually not his fault. I think we kind of like, I feel like we've been, we dropped the ball a little bit. He could have recorded, but... Yeah, what's he, uh, he's uh, ice fishing? Well, yeah, so he was ice fishing, and then he's off to California tonight, I think. Something wow. like that. So World for all traveler. Those, all those big Kyle fans, you know where to follow him, too. His Who stalkers cares? and stuff. Is what he's I a, say. Who he's cares? a regular Dan Bilzerian. What? He's traveling the world, partying with ladies, mm. doing all that manly stuff. Kyle? Hitting, Is the, that a- hitting the beach. <laughs> yeah, man. Is this the all same right. Kyle? <laughs> Yes, it's the same Kyle. I feel like his ears are going to be burning a little bit, but uh, hopefully you... he'll be able to uh, jump in with a little review at some point. He said he might record something or other, and we can yeah. insert it right into this episode. But otherwise, we're going to be wheeling and dealing, free flowing, uh, don't not not chained down by the uh, by the boss man. We're free. Yeah. So where are we at? We got uh, this is week four or week is this week five? Could five. be week five. This is five. Who knows how long Jeez, Godzilla's going to last? Keep going. One of those months with five weeks, I guess. <laughs> we oh, have six episodes, right? Yeah. yeah. One Jeez. more. One more. We're doing movie one this. more of this shit. Jesus. Yeah. We got one more. It's I know, right? Year. Oh. King of the Monsters is the last one. But what That's do we have? That's the new one, right? That That's is the, the new one. one. Ho- the new Hollywood one, I should say. Right. But what do we have today, Alex? Uh, Godzilla Final Wars. It's plural for whatever reason. With a Z. I hope, I hope someone can explain that to me because I don't know why it's just not called Godzilla Final War. So can I why, cut in? why it wouldn't be called Final War? Yeah, just like plural. Why why is it why is it multiple? Yeah, there, it wasn't like there was multiple World War Two. It wasn't like World Wars Two. Right, it's true. Like they weren't talking about like battles America and theaters of versus, war. Right. But it was one war. So this is well, I think one, they might be they might be going after that theaters of war type thing. I have something right. important to right, say. Right, but those are individual battles. So you got yeah. the battle well, you, for Paris, the battle for New York. Right. The battle, battle for, for LA. City. Battlestar Galactica. The right. battle for the Battlestar. Battle of Iwo Jima. Yeah, Can I cut battle, in? battle of Endor. <laughs> Battlefield Earth. Best movie ever made. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zach, what'd you have to say? Huh? Love is Zach? a battlefield. <laughs> Good Matt Benatar. Is or is that, is that heart? Love it. Don't, don't sing too much of it. We're going to get in trouble. No, you're right. Um, I do Zach, have something guys, to say. I thought maybe, were you going to come in with a like a like like an alarm just to, for uh, old time's sake? No, I actually have some no. terrible news to, to let, tell the listeners and you, 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 my, 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 my friends, you guys. I'm a friend. Okay. Oh. Wow, and thank you. That terrible news is is that I've recently had some hiccups with my um, cellular device, as some call it, or a smartphone, and I've unfortunately lost all previous recordings and sound clips that I've had. Oh, oh, holy oh, shit! No. no joke, no lie. So we don't so even we have a soundboard. <laughs> we don't have God. shit. It's a ramshackle I'm, production over here. Wow. Well. <laughs> I have done five factory, no, six now, six factory resets of my phone in the past week and a half. So there it is. There it is. Did that one get deleted? (laughs) Yeah. There it is. is. It's a damn shame. Damn it. I guess you could just do the sounds off the top of your head, right? Like with my voice? Yeah. Like do do the Godzilla war. Yeah. That was good. Okay. All right, guys, Fine. I've got yeah. I've got the sound effect for us. All right. There we go. Dive, 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 dive. Right? Now, All right. Sing, now, now somebody has to sing Kyle's Godzilla theme. <laughs> oh, Alex? yeah. I got I to gotta make sure I have that so I can edit oh, it. Oh, your, your phone dying caused Kyle to lose his soundboard as well? 
I just want to hear know, somebody sing it. <laughs> I don't even know all the lyrics to it. If I had the it's lyrics, so I'd be happy to sing it. Go, but go, I don't have Godzilla. It. That's not even. That's not. How does he start it? Go I Godzilla! Go, go Godzilla! Go Godzilla! Go Godzilla! Go Godzilla! Godzilla's in your house. Godzilla's in the. Huh. <laughs> you know he dropped a Lambo. <laughs> yeah. Godzilla ain't cheap or something like that. Should we try? Should the whole episode just be us trying to reconstruct the song? <laughs> <laughs> Time to turn some version sideways. Go Godzilla, go, go Godzilla. Godzilla's in your house. Godzilla's in my house. He's gonna get you when you go to sleep. Godzilla drives a Lambo, you know he ain't cheap. Go. What you doing now? Evening in Tokyo, burn it to the ground. Fighting King Kong and you're fighting Mothra. You fight the whole world, you're Godzilla. Your God, Zilla, ya! Cause your God, Zilla, ya! Go, Godzilla, go, go, Godzilla! Go, Godzilla, go, go, Godzilla! How does he end it? He ends it screaming. That lightning it strikes me out. Yeah, oh, the lightning uh, strike. Yeah. Oh, boy. Go, go Godzilla! So, you know, and, and listeners should know the reason why we're rambling on about Kyle and his missing is because uh, we watched Godzilla Final Wars, and that unfortunately <laughs> means that this uh, we're not going to be super enthused to talk about it. Probably mostly because like, I I'm like going to have trouble it. reconstructing it. This is I probably a Kyle enjoy so. kind of movie. Yeah, Kyle I'm put, I, putting money on it. So let's so let, let let's uh, before we get in the Jamie, you're doing the uh, recap, right? Oh, I'll be trying to do this recap. Yeah. So let's just start this off by saying um, this is the uh, the final Toho Godzilla film in the Millennium series, the Millennium era. So we've made it, we've gone through it, and this is the, this is actually it because ne- our last one's going to be Hollywood. So mm. I hope you guys enjoyed it. No. <laughs> Good. Oh, sorry. You were talking to the listeners. Listeners. <laughs> I don't listeners. know. What, I don't know whether they've enjoyed it. But all right, Jamie. Good uh, luck. Funny, no, yeah. Well, good I will luck say, with this. And before we get into it too much, and before we get to next week's final Godzilla thing, I haven't necessarily enjoyed all of the Godzilla films. But I think when you go through a large number of entries in a franchise, you often there's at least a, an appreciation of kind of what uh, they were going for in the story they have in the building of lore. I think that's why. It's so um, kind of devastating to fans if a, an entry in a series kind of betrays the lore that has been built because they've kind of followed along in a journey. Then all of a sudden, like some filmmakers like, no, I'm going to zig away from that. And they kind of don't like that. And I found that with uh, – I don't know if you knew this, guys, but I have a website, um, by movie does, badmovietwins.com. Mm-hmm. And we've you kind of mumbled some, that. Can you say that one more time? Oh, sorry. Badmovietwins.com. Okay. And uh, we've gone through a bunch of different franchises, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, um, Friday the 13th. And usually what happens is you start it off and you're like, this is terrible. And by the end, you're like, I can't believe they betrayed everything I loved about this franchise for the last entry of whenever they reboot it and they ruin it. And so I think I have come to appreciate Godzilla, but I won't necessarily say I appreciated this film. So let's okay. individually. Let's do it. All right. Should we get into it? Do it. Do it. All right. <clears throat> we open. And it's already crazy. There's like all kinds of <laughs> flash and shit. Things are going nuts. We're in Antarctica, which is classic for Japanese film, as you remember from our Japanese movie month. It's 1954. Godzilla is like attacking. We have a flying submarine with like a drill on the front of it going after Godzilla. And it's shooting all kinds of laser beams and shit. And it traps. It's able to trap Godzilla under uh, like the ice and stuff like that, which I guess is the, how he was kind of trapped in the original, right? Because we saw in or in the second was it in the second one that he got trapped in ice. I can't even remember uh, the first uh, the first movie with uh, Godzilla versus King Kong. They resurrected him out of ice, right? So that would have been the second. Then the second movie was when he was trapped in the ice. Well, whatever. Anyways, they're they're kind of recreating a classic way in which Godzilla has been trapped before. Yeah, this one again is doing like what multiple Godzilla movies has done. It's like I want to say it's a direct sequel to the original, but it like doesn't necessarily account for anything else that's happened previously. Right. <laughs> and so after that, after Godzilla has been kind of trapped, there's like a discovery. They mention how this is like a discovery of like mutants 
Um, there's like mutant people who are, we don't even really see what makes them mutants. I guess they're just like super good at fighting or something. They're like X-Men, I guess, but not really with any super special powers, right? It's like they can focus really well. Yeah, I don't <laughs> they, know. they got like They've super got, like, jumping fighting and stuff. powers. Yeah, yeah. think uh, think Power Rangers is what I thought watching them. Just how they fought and their kung fu and the little the little clips where it, like introduced their character, like with them doing like a roundhouse kick through the air in slow motion right. and stuff. Well, I, th- and every- I, th- I yeah. was thinking more along the lines of Matrix instead of. Well, if anyone yeah, watched uh, from their childhood, it would have been mid '90s or so. Like on Fox uh, was WMAC Masters. It was octo- like an octagon where uh, kung fu fighters fought like ninjas and stuff. They would send into the ring. I do was, remember this. Yeah, My God. that is exactly what we saw in this film with the uh, the two sparring uh, mutants. Um, well, anyways, they they're mutants. I'm not even sure why they're mutants, but they're recruited to a force called the Earth Defense Force. And they, their entire job is to battle monsters. And so the next scene we see is that, that sweet-ass um, submarine. <laughs> it's called like a Tengo. And it's, it's actually underwater. The only time in the movie that it's actually underwater is this scene where it's kind of um, off the coast of Normandy, I think they mention. And it's going after uh, a monster uh, called Manda. Manda, yeah. And yeah, big old dragon thing. Yep. And – we see our captain Douglas Gordon, Lieutenant Gordon, and um, he is a baller. I, didn't, I couldn't tell whether like what he was. He almost looks like he's a Super Mario brother. Yeah. Like they <laughs> they I found a, an American person, and it's almost like he couldn't. I, I couldn't tell if he was like mumbling his lines or if he was from a different country and they were dubbing him over. Apparently, he is American, but very flat affect when he talks and now, stuff Jamie, like that. Now, I, Jamie, I yeah. will, I can cut in and, and kind of tell these listeners about who these kaiju are that appear, because there's a lot. There's oh, a lot sure. I'd love to, I, I would love to to know a little bit about Manda, because sometimes you see these guys and you're like, oh, that one's cool. I really like that one. Yeah. Uh, but you don't, you don't really know which other movies and stuff they were from. Including all the toy action figures that happens in this movie at one point, there are like 20 or 20, 20 to 30 kaiju that are shown in this movie it's oh crazy. yeah and even some even some well-known disaster ones like oh, ones that people hated yeah we'll get to that um <laughs> but this first one uh what was it? manda right yeah so manda. manda's manda's never been in a godzilla movie this is the first time manda was in a godzilla movie but originally and this is gonna blow your minds manda was from the movie atragon Oh really? And that's See, the one we another can't Another reason get, why right? we need to get Atragon. Yeah, we yeah. can't get that one. It's got. I think. I think actually we can get it, but it would cost us seventy dollars, and we haven't gotten that insane <laughs> yet. We're, we've gotten pretty insane, but we haven't gotten buy, buying it for seventy dollars. So that's where insane. Manda comes from. Um, okay, so then we flash over uh, a couple of the quote unquote mutants are fighting. Uh, Shinichi Ozaki is our like main character kind of and he's got like a little bit of a soft heart like some of the mutants are like we are meant only to kill we are mutants we are superior um you can't have you can't hesitate you can't uh anything like that and, whereas Shinichi's kind of like well how can we help humanity if we don't feel empathy for humanity how if we don't feel you know, badly by killing someone, how can we be the protectors of earth or whatever? And, but like even the, the head of the mutant group, the earth defense uh, force is like, you can't be are like, you kind of suck, man. Like you gotta, you gotta fight better and do all that stuff and whatever. And so instead of having them, him like join into like another battle, they're like, okay, while the uh, Gotengo is um, grounded, because one of the things it fought Manda, and they did a bunch of like tricky maneuvers and really risky stuff. And so they were able to defeat Manda and all that stuff. But uh, uh, Douglas Gordon or Captain Gordon was suspended and Gotengo had to go and get repaired, um, you know, because of all the damage uh, and stuff like that. And so everyone's kind of at a halt. So they're like, okay, well, Sunichi, you go guard this UN biologist. She's super smart, Dr. Miyuki. Uh, Odinashi, and she's going to go study this thing we found. We found this big mummified monster, and we're going to go study it. It's pretty. It's, it seems like it might be a little important. And he shows up, and she. He's like, "Whoa!" She's like a babe, and she's like, "Hey, I don't want you just like ogling me. I'm here to do like serious science research. And just because I'm also a babe doesn't mean anything. Like, don't even worry about it." And so they go together and everyone's kind of making fun of him too. They're like, oh man, you got to, what do you got to guard this like girl or whatever? And he's like, shut up. 
and they go over to this monster and they find out uh they they it's like a super crazy thing like this is where it's going to be like really hard to recap they're seeing this monster they're like oh this monster's like a mutant too it's got like the mutant dna that you have and he's like what and then they get randomly transported to mothra's twins Exi- people now this if you guys remember i i said most of the time when mothra was in movies it would show her like connected like the, the these two twin fairies would be like the speakers yeah. of mothra because mothra's really connected to the world and they brought it and back they, for this yeah. one and they seem to be kind of just like uh some kind of exposition to help you <laughs> understand what's going on because they just kind of explain what's going on with this mummified monster gigan because it's like an alien cyborg um, sent to destroy the Earth, who is defeated by Mothra and has this like mutant DNA or whatever. Yes. And they also warn that upcoming is going to be the big battle that's going on, and that you know everyone's going to have to kind of choose sides. You have to either either going to join up uh, with the the one side, and it may be the mutants may feel like they should go on that side, or they join with humanity. And yeah. they're just they're just kind of warning, like, hey, by the way, this is going to come. You're going to have a really tough choice upcoming. It's like, okay. FYI, sudden, listeners, yeah. Mothra, originally 1961 from the film Mothra. And uh, did you already mentioned how – Gigan, right? Yeah. So Gigan was a, the big mummified monster. Was he from yep. something as well? Yep. Gigan or, or is, she. Or she. I don't know. Is it a here? They. Or let's just say they, they. right? Cover oh, our bases. Gigan uh, first shows up in 1972, Godzilla versus Gigan. So. Oh, cool. So he, he was, they, they, were like, they were like the titular monster. Yes. He was a big, he's a big That's one. That's cool. Was was uh, he was he or she a, a good guy or, or a bad, bad guy? Was it, bad. okay? So okay, that was one of the ones where Godzilla, Godzilla was saves. protecting. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, anyways, now and this is gonna be we've got a lightning round for you right now because <laughs> giant monsters start attacking everywhere. We got Rodan attacking New York City. Go, Rodan. <laughs> Rodan, sorry. <laughs> Ro- I thought you said Rodan. I'm like I don't remember a rat in this movie. Okay, yeah. So Rodan, uh, another one of the big popular kaiju. Is from originally the 1956 film Rodan. So nice, but then Rodan's appeared in multiple Godzilla movies. And was that the big like pterodactyl kind of thing? Yes. Okay. And then uh, Anguirus attacks Shanghai. Yes. So Anguirus. And that's it, he's like he like, almost looks like that dinosaur with like the spiky back. Is that right? But not. Yeah. But but different from uh, Baragon, who we had in that okay. other one. Right. Yeah. yeah that's right. Well, uh, obviously, I love Baragon. I, that, he was no Baragon. Let's be real. <laughs> So Anguirus shows up originally in 1955, Godzilla raids again. Okay. Then we have Zilla attacking. <laughs> Everyone knows quick, who Zilla is. One of our is. super fans, Derp Tank, would like to say that he personally likes Anguirus. Ooh. Okay. So I, I also I did enjoy fan. it, but, but okay, I just want to let the super fan know, not no Baragon. Let's be <laughs> Just to be clear. But Zilla attacks Sydney, and Zilla is the nickname given by the Japanese, uh, offered by Toho Company, to the American Godzilla from 1998. So it's kind yeah. of funny. They they use Zilla in this one specifically to kind of like, again, <laughs> razz them. Yeah. The whole Millennium series seems to be like to just make up for Godzilla in 1998. Yeah, they're very, very anti that Hollywood film. Right. Then we have King Caesar. Okay, that one. Okinawa. <laughs> King Caesar is probably like the most. Ben, you mentioned Power Rangers. I would say King Caesar looks like the most Power Ranger esque oh, villain. Was was he the one who's like like it looks like a human being just kind of running around? <laughs> yeah, like a lion or something. Yeah, almost. that yeah, was like great. I love that one. King Caesar's the best. I love King Caesar. And that name <laughs> so is weird looking. Ridiculous. It's like really scary. Like scary. Yeah. Like he's like nightmare nightmare stuff. Yeah. So he's King so Caesar looking. shows up in 1974. Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Oh. Was he a good guy or a bad guy? As a bad guy, I believe. Okay. Yeah, King Caesar uh, looks a little bit like the uh, the blue lion guy. Yeah. The blue yeah. Uh, Power Rangers. Egyptian one from Power Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then what about uh, Kamakaras attacks Paris? Kamakaras. Right. That is the uh, was that that was the spider one, right? Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of forgetting that one. I think Kamakaras uh, is the is the dragonfly looking thing. Is the dragonfly? You're right. You're right because it's flying around. That's from a 1967, the film Son of Godzilla. Nice, which we will also see. But uh, Kumunga attacks Phoenix. That's, that's the, the spider. Uh, that's the spider. That's a spider. So that's 1967 film, also Son of Godzilla. And then Ibira, Ibira attacks Tokai. Now that one is that lobster looking thing. Oh, cool! I like that one. Some some Zach back backbone Zach trivia. This was one of my first ever Godzilla movies that I had, had, I had ever seen, and 
Uh, it's the first VHS Godzilla film I ever had. Was the 1966? Is it? I don't even know how to pronounce it correctly. But is it Ebera? Probably Ebera. Yeah. Ebera Horror of the Deep Godzilla movie. Oh, that's cool. And then what about Ed? And then Hedora attacks an unknown location. Hedora, yes, Hedora from 1971, Godzilla. Vor, ver, from 1971, Godzilla versus Hedora. Yeah. So then the EDF, the Earth Defense Force, they kind of like spread out. There's a bunch of um, kind of submarines going around. They're attacking. It's it's pretty hit or miss. Like they're they're kind of doing well at times, but then it looks like it's going to be a, a pretty tight battle. And also the 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 group that was on Katengo, they get to go out and they're kind of running around shooting like big guns and stuff like that. But at the, at, at the moment where everything seems to be kind of iffy, whether they're going to come out on top, um, some aliens come out of the sky and basically disappear all of the um, all of the monsters all at once. And they're like, hey, Earth, by the way, we're like aliens, we're called exilians, and we are here for peace. Look, we just got rid of all those monsters. So that, that proves it, that we 100% are here to help you guys and be like, good, we definitely want peace, don't worry about it. We also have seen earlier, like they, they were trying to looking for like the UN secretary who had disappeared. His his plane had like disappeared, and he kind of comes out and he's like, "I was saved by the Exilians as well, and everything is like good to go. Don't worry about it. Thumbs up." Exilians sounds a heck of a lot like aliens. <laughs> one would think, right? But they're also they're they got they got rid of all those monsters. So I, for one, believe them. It's strange. Right? They all look like normal Japanese people. Yeah. Hmm. And then the Axilians, they also warn that the reason they're there is to help Earth avoid a planet called Gorath that's going to impact there. And this is one of the funnier parts because they show they show some video. They're like, hey, look, here's Gorath. Don't even worry about it. Definitely heading for you and whatever. And one of the things that later on they do to prove that the Axilians aren't like real is they're like, it's like a bad Photoshop. Like it's not even like, it's not even good. <laughs> I guess like basically it's just like, Look, we took all their videos and overlapped it, and it's basically the same picture of Gorath in all of them, and that's impossible. And it's like, ah, this is the Exilians couldn't even produce a good fake. They couldn't even like fake them out. Like their their Photoshop skills weren't even good enough. So, uh, so anyways, the, a peace pact is signed with them. There's a lot of like kind of discussion on Earth about like what are they here for? Um, are they good? Should we believe them? A bunch of them become kind of celebrities. There's one guy. What was his name? X. I think he just called himself X, right? Yeah. yeah. And he he kind of becomes a little bit of a celebrity. He's real weird. And yeah. oh, he gets even weirder. He gets wild by the end of it. Uh, but uh, – and he's kind of like, you know, kind of one of the up-and-comers. He's a hot shot. And, no, he's, the, he's like the big-time hot shot. And then while this is all going on, we also find that one of the monsters didn't quite uh, get taken up by the aliens. And that – which one's that one, Zach? Um – that's Manila. Yes. A, give, that's a hint. Hint. It's a Manila. Yes. Manila yeah. is there. And the, I don't know. Do we want to talk about Manila now? Because I feel like if no one has ever seen a baby Godzilla before, they have no idea what the hell's going on with this thing. No, it just kind of, it's like hanging out for a second. You wouldn't even necessarily know it's baby Godzilla. Like, obviously, it's like, I guess it kind of looks like a Godzilla. It more looks like almost like a human mixed with Godzilla. It's like Godzilla had sex with a human. Are we sure that didn't happen, Zach? Well, it's more like a turtle without a shell. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so we're it, talking about like we have a Super Mario brother captain and a Koopa without a shell? Yeah. That's accurate. It's accurate. Mm. Still better he's, than he's that. He's real Super doughy, Mario looks, looks like a little baby. Sure. But he's not. He weighs a ton. Or how many tons, actually? Alex? Who are we talking about? Manila? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, 5,000 metric tons, which is 11 million pounds. That's <laughs> ridiculous. 11 million pounds. He would fall through the like, – I don't even like, – if he took one step, he would like crush <laughs> the earth, wouldn't he? Like shatter the earth? Yeah. The weight on some of these monsters is out of, out of, out of this world. It's ridiculous. Actually, no yeah. Way. I guess it, he, probably its entire body would just collapse in on itself. Isn't and he like the, the same monster. height as the boy? King exactly. Caesar? Like the yeah, he was. Movie. Yeah. yeah. King Caesar, that little guy that was bouncing around – yeah, he weighs fifty thousand tons. Okay, holy shit! That and he's just bouncing around. That would have destroyed everything in its path. Whatever, I love it. Yeah, 
Yeah, we I, love it. This movie is yeah. the best. <laughs> so anyways, uh, getting back to the movie that we all think is the best Godzilla film of all time, Ozaki Miyuki and her sister Anna, which the only reason we even know her is that she interviewed the UN secretary before. So she kind of knows a little bit about him and she starts to like dis distrust. Like she comes in and he's like, this is really weird. Check this out. They show a video and they're like, do you notice anything weird? And I'm watching this video. I'm like, no, <laughs> everything seems fine. She's like, he never effing blinks. And then I was sitting there being like, I don't know. I feel like I don't blink for as long as they just had that video going. And even as they were talking, I was watching them. They weren't blinking either. So then I started to distrust, distrust the movie. Right guys? Sure. Like, Fuck this. What a weird thing. What's but the name of the dog? Um, Clint. That's right. Yeah, there we go. Look at me. <laughs> I watch this movie. Don't Come even here, worry Clint. about it, guys. Yeah. See, I'm better than this guy, this bozo. See, the Exilians <laughs> weren't even good. They like sucked. They they didn't even they didn't cover any of their bases. It's like basically they trusted that no one would ask literally any questions, and they wouldn't analyze the footage at all because. Anna, not only does she notice that the, like certain people don't blink anymore, like the UN secretary doesn't blink anymore and seems to not know certain relevant facts about his own life, but they notice other people are potentially not blinking. And then they notice that Gorath, this planet, is just like a hologram that it always looks the same. And so it's clearly a fake. And so um, – uh, and so, yeah, so they, they kind of, they want to report it to the head of the EDF, but when they go and see her, they're like, oh shit, she's also been replaced. And so um, they go on to like a big interview and Anna uses the, her platform to kind of prove that the UN secretary is uh, a, an, an ex-alien uh, because she does this whole thing with this dog to be like, oh, don't you love your dog? Isn't this a great dog? And he's like, oh yes, of course, my dog. And she's like... Well, why don't you call the dog? And he's like, oh, well, remind me. My, my brain's kind of like addled since the big accident. So, oh, it's Clint. He's like, oh, of course, Clint. Calls Clint over. And then she's like, actually, this is my dog. It's not Clint at all. And everyone's like, oh. And uh, X kind of is like, well, screw this. And kills uh, all of them. Basically kills them and takes command. He's like, I am now the head of everything. So screw that and screw you and screw everything and screw everyone. Because earth is going to be mine and you can't stop us because we got all the effing monsters so what is because and they're they're basically just they're like oh you're cattle you're going to be sheep you're basically going to be our food source and we're gonna we're gonna let you probably bone i mean i think i think the implication is they're all just gonna have sex with each other um make more human beings and then they will start eating the humans right yes absolutely accurate. yep 100 percent accurate and they know that there's only one thing that they can do because they're, they're basically like, we're going to hold you hostage we, because we have all these – we actually have all these monsters like at our, at our fingertips. But not only that, we got this Gigan, We got this mutant monster that you found mummified. We're going to wake him up. And at this point, the EDF, the surviving members and stuff like that is like, oh, we only have one thing to do. And what's that one thing that they can do? This is a great, great podcast. Dead air. Dead air. So they're going to wake up the only monster that can save Japan. Ah! Wow. Did you, did you fix your phone? Yep. Perfect. That was, that was it. <laughs> yep. And they're like, okay, well, we can't, how are we going to wake up Godzilla? He's up in there. He's down in our Antarctica. And he's like, oh, we're going to take the Gatengo, but we need a captain. And we're going to get our boy, Captain Gordon. And we're going to take him. Bring him take back. It, Taken down, and so they go get him. He's basically the best. I mean, he is the best character in this. He's kind of he's like super strange. He's mumbling all the time. He at one point he just says, "I'm I'm I'm gonna like hit you to like a woman," and like a woman's like, "Oh, you're not gonna hit me." And he's like, "Uh, watch me." <laughs> basically, you're like, "Oh, interesting." Uh, but he is uh ready to you know drive that submarine and uh, wake up Godzilla, and so. Let's see what 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 happens next. Where are we at? Yeah, so they're going down to get Godzilla, right? Yeah. Th do they just wake him up naturally? Just how do they do it? Do they they blow open the ice or something like that? 
Uh, I can't even I can't even recall when he woke up or did he wake up naturally? I remember they go down there and it's already this is like at the hour five minute mark. So we went like an entire hour without Godzilla pretty much. Which right. Is yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. He was he was he wasn't in this very much at all until they no, started having was, to fight everyone. And I'll save it for after my opinion on it later. But um, I think they just shot a few some some rockets. Right. And then it is like yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. And, and Geigen. And Geigen, um, Geigen's chasing them. Yeah, Geigen's like and, an immediate fight with Godzilla. Yeah, and so since he doesn't have any M base, like the mutant base, he can't be controlled. Like one of the problems is like everyone in EDF can actually be controlled by the mutants because they have this M base. And it's weird because you're like, oh, I wonder why, uh, what's his name, um, our main character, uh, uh, Shinichi, why isn't he getting controlled? But that'll come up later. And they knew the reason they wanted to wake up Godzilla in the first place is like he doesn't have an M base. He was like the original monster. He wasn't one of these mutants. And so he can't be controlled. He he he's kind of independent. And even though obviously he could turn around and like destroy everything, he's a badass and he'll fight the other monsters for them. And so he turns around and and goes after Gigan and immediately just like totally fucks him up. Takes him to town with his super super fire breath or whatever which is incredibly overused in this movie but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like just, super he, duper extra powerful i mean i think part of it's is over time and especially as they kept on having these movies where they're like and then we're gonna have 12 monsters yeah. they had to somehow make him the best and how you make him the best is making his fire breath power like more and increasingly powerful and just decapitating people yeah just taking left taking out left and right so they keep on the katango is kind of guiding godzilla um to the other monsters uh, and so they, I mean, I think at this point we just kind of work for a while. We're just going fight to fight, right? Yeah. If you Godzilla call takes fights. out Zilla, Godzilla takes out a few other ones. Oh, but what's, the song fights, ha- what's the song playing with Zilla? I can't remember. What is it? What's the band? Remember Ben, Alex, you guys probably. It is some 41. Some 41. Oh, nice. that's right. It just starts rocking in Sydney, Australia. And that's when the Zilla fight happens. Right. Yeah. It's a terrible cool. song. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool. I liked it. It just kind of sounded like a ripoff of System of a Down, in my opinion. But it was cool well, that they go. got him on board for American audiences to get excited about. Yeah, and so then he, they, they, he like fights a bunch of the other ones. At one point, he fights that lion monster. That was my favorite fight because it basically looks like a human being just like running around in like a weird lion costume, and I kind of dug that. Yeah, that's when he was fighting Rodan and Anguirus and King Caesar – what was the other ridiculous fight? Uh, was it the spider Kumanga that he just lasses Something it like and just whips that thing like miles in an opposite direction? Yeah, I think that that's was right. Ridiculous. One of the one of the bug ones. Yep. Now and the so, thing about Caesar, Anguirus, and Rodan—they don't die, right? He just stacks them up, like they just get stacked up and they're kind of just knocked out. Right. It's like that they don't have their heads blown off like a few of these guys do. <laughs> right. Even though Gigan kind of got blown away, but he even comes back. Because he gets upgraded. He gets upgraded with like chainsaw hands. It's like crazy chainsaw hands. Um, but anyways, uh, they they get uh, Godzilla to Tokyo and they decide, okay, idiot, they're gonna they're gonna engage um, the Zillions in their like headquarters, and while Godzilla is kind of like fighting, and so they go in and like crash into the uh, into the mothership or whatever, and they're gonna like go after them, I guess. And um, at the same time, they're kind of releasing all these monsters. So they release uh, Monster X comes out of like whatever the planet was that came. And then they upgrade Gigan with these like chainsaw hands. And so Godzilla's got his hands full at this point. He's got these two like upgraded monsters uh, going after him. And you're like, oh, Godzilla's going to die. There's literally no monster that could possibly come and help Godzilla at this point and to save the day. Or is there, Zach? Mothra. Right. And does he does, does the song? They kind of do play a song whenever Mothra shows up. Mm-hmm. Is that like a classical one, or is it just like <sighs> different every time? I honestly can't remember if it's like the classic one or not. Yeah. So, anyways, he's Mothra comes in, kind of saves the day. He does get wounded, but helps destroy um, the big old cyborgs. Yeah, which is what they call them. Uh, and then in the Zillion ship, um, X kind of reveals why it is that uh, that Ozaki and he are not controllable, kind of. Like that's why why he's the leader and why he can't control 
uh, Shinichi Ozaki is because he's a Kaiser. <laughs> I guess uh, their powerful beings, beings distinct, and I'm reading this, distinct from regular mutants born on rare occasions. Great. And uh, so they can't, he can't like control him. They, um, they can, he can only kind of control his like friends or whatever, I think, or maybe he can try to control him or I don't know. It's all very confusing at this point. And, and X, the guy who's playing X is going nuts as like, I'm not even saying like, as like the character, the actor is going crazy at this point. And I don't know if it was like, is this good acting? Is this bad acting? I had no idea at this point because it was so like, over the top. Yeah. What was happening. Yeah. And so they kind of like do battle, um, they get help from the twins again and like Mothra twins. I don't even know. And the, he's able to mortally wound X in like a fight. And X is like, I don't even give a shit because guess what? Self-destruct. And we get them running through the thing. Uh, they they run away. We get uh, uh, Captain um, – what's his name? Gordon. He is like, go ahead. I'm like a badass. He pulls out his dick, shows shows everyone. It's like, check it out. And they're like, actually, okay, yes. Yeah, obviously. It's back. Um, yeah. Talk about a mushroom kingdom. Am I right? <laughs> Nailed it. Crushed uh, it. That's why, we're, that's why I rated R. That's why. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he kind of like does, he like fights. And while they get, they get cornered by some bad guys and he like kills everyone and then comes back. It's like, what, you guys aren't already back to the thing. I told you to go to the effing submarine. And he's like just crushing people left and right, helping them get back to the, the submarine. And so they're able to uh, get onto the Gatengo, um and kind of back it out of the mothership right before it explodes. Uh, Godzilla and Monster X, they're still battling. Um, and he turns into what actually is, is what he says. You're like, oh, Monster X. I wonder who that is. Who is it, Zach? Kaiser Ghidorah. Wait, so that, that's distinct from King Ghidorah? Yes. Uh, oh, wow. Why? The, so is this the only appearance of Kaiser Ghidorah? Yes. Uh, let me fact check that on that there uh, internet that there. But yes, Kaiser Ghidorah is the transformation of Monster X, um, debuted in Godzilla Final Wars. All right. And then um, Godzilla is able to destroy Kaiser Ghidorah after a tussle. Uh, obviously, at times it seems like Godzilla may not win, but then he wins. He's gonna he turns on the submarine and is like, "I'm gonna take you out because I'm Godzilla and I'm the king of all monsters." But his little baby Manila shows up and is like, "No, don't! I love humans and I love the human race." And Godzilla's like, "Fine." And so he walks into the ocean and Manila follows after him, and everyone cheers in as humanity sunset. is saved in the sunset. Yeah. And that's it. So it's a very straightforward movie with obviously everything is very obvious and straightforward. <laughs> um, Godzilla did not really, he, you know, did, did, did he talk in this film? No, not really. What? Huh? Did what? Godzilla talk? No. What? Moving on. <laughs> um, did you want to talk at all about Manila? I, yeah, I so do. I, I have a question about Manila. For What's your question? Our Zach expert. Our Zach expert. Uh, Manila, I feel like I've seen like different baby Godzillas, and I'm wondering what what's the relationship or story, or why why do different baby Godzillas look different from each other? Are they progeny of Godzilla? Because we've got Manila, we've got the babies from the American one, we've got Godzilla Junior, and yep. we've got Godzuki. Yep. What's what's going on here? Okay, so obviously it was so during that one, oh, during the uh, like the sixties and the seventies era, pretty sure it was the Heisei, right? Uh, when they were trying to make Godzilla more kind of like comedy, family friendly, and stuff, they introduced the uh, Manila character, uh, I believe first, and he spoke. I'm pretty sure he spoke. <laughs> so you could watch one of those movies and he's just speaking normal English, and it's ridiculous. But um, I'd say it's just kind of like for kids. Uh, then they just made some the Gonzuki one I think was only for animated television and I'm pretty sure he spoke English and then there was Godzilla Jr. who was kind of like a miniature Godzilla who didn't speak and who kind of just hunched and walked around and then and then the mini Zilla right? from the Godzilla oh, 1998 yeah I mean well than that but that's whatever <laughs> 
But um, well, in the sequel, in the sequel, they would have played a big role because in the sequel, it would have been the baby that would have like the main character. Well, I, I mean, I guess you're technically you're right. The animated series, I guess that is the baby one, right? <laughs> it grows up to become yeah. a regular sized one. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. I don't really have a ton of backstory on Manila. It's just the um, it's from Toho's 1967 film Son of Godzilla. Adopted I was Son surprised of Godzilla. because obviously Zilla, the American Godzilla, is like derided and like made fun of a lot in the Japanese series. And I kind of – I had gotten the sense from what I had been reading and stuff that people also didn't enjoy Son of Godzilla like as like a thing. Because it like looked ridiculous. Like they make gifts out of it and stuff. It looks dumb. And yet here it was as like an actual part of Godzilla Final Wars, unironically. Like they didn't kill, they didn't kick him into the ocean, didn't have Godzilla like stomp him to death or something. It's just like he legitimately like is the hero of the film. And that's that was just I odd. I didn't realize that like he was considered like vital to the franchise or whatever. Very, there very was. interesting. Yeah. Now there yeah, was I don't know. there was the scene in the movie where they had that little boy, and he was playing with action figures of all these different kaiju monsters. I don't know if you guys caught it or not, or even in, realized it, but like right when it cut to that scene, he was playing with a blue turtle. Remember that? Right. And he chucks yeah. it in the fire and calls it a loser. That was a little uh, a little knock at the camera franchise huh so because that was like he had like what was it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten like probably like 15 action figures there on the table i counted of a bunch of i mean like even he had an action figure of king Ghidorah and space oh the Godzilla. canadian boy yeah yeah yeah, yeah that canadian covered boy. in he, chocolate yeah, yeah he had all those toys of like mm. kaiju from previous yes, godzilla films but he did not have the gamma one and he had that little toy blue turtle though and he threw it in the fire so wait you're saying it's a canadian the canadian boy covered in chocolate Yes. Ah. Also, Alex, just so you know, um, Kaiser Ghidorah weighs 100,000 metric tons. <laughs> Kaiser? Yeah. yeah. He's got a crazy scream, too, or roar for listening <laughs> to it. His if height, weigh, 140 meters. If you weigh 100,000 tons, guy. any noise you make, I feel like, would just shatter the planet. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't Possible. be. For this. You know, Possible. we might not even be able to hear it. It may not be... And our, it, it may, yeah, our ears yeah. may not comprehend it. it may just translate as an earthquake. Um, all right. Shall we do some ratings? I know Kyle's probably, I think he had mentioned he was going to upload something, so we might have something to insert here. But otherwise, I think we can just get into it. Who wants to go first? Someone jump in. I'll go first. I think it's usually, okay. It's usually Zach, but that's okay. <sighs> that's fine. He can go last. This movie <laughs> Sucked. I had no idea Ooh. what was going on. Like eighty percent of it. All right. the The fights were okay, I guess. The sub action was weird and crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why the mutants were such a big part of it. I don't even know if you explained it good or not, Jamie. But I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, it was not it, good. It, yeah, <laughs> none of it made sense to me. It just, I, I guess, from reading other reviews it sounds like this is a lot of fan service for whatever reason so uh fans really like this one or most fans really like this one in terms of a movie for someone that never really watched godzilla or cares for godzilla movies this movie is not that great <sighs> um like I said, I was just confused the whole time. I couldn't understand what the heck was going on. The fight scenes were a little crazy. I know I had said earlier, it reminded me a lot of, um, well, w when the humans were fighting, excuse me, not the monsters, like Ben, you'd said what Power Rangers. I, I felt it kind of like a weird Matrix fight and weird mm -hmm. cameras. And there was really no reason for it to be in the movie, but they added it in. It felt like a live action anime. Which is they okay, did, they but... They did do a bullet time uh, camera where they did yeah, the... Yeah, in that one fight degrees. in the cage. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, it felt like a live-action anime for half of the movie, and then the other half felt like a, a Godzilla film that they just pieced two movies together is what it felt like to me. Overall, I, I got to come in low on this one. I got to give it like a, a 1.5. I... 
I did not like it. So that's why wow. I rated it 1.5. Yeah. Woo. Woof. That's, yeah. a, that's a dagger there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll well, jump in Kyle, with mine. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, Kyle's 11 should, should <laughs> even it out. Yeah. It'll, yeah. I'll jump in with mine. I actually wrote one uh, to send to Zach, so it's going to be pretty concise here. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to make it on when we were actually recording, but here I am. Uh, Godzilla Final Wars delivers wacky action and hijinks akin to the stylings of many contemporary anime. The dramatic character reveals and maneuvers reminded me of Power Rangers, while the octagon cage match was obviously derivative of WMAC Masters from my 90s childhood. However, no amount of vicarious nostalgia was enough to keep me from dozing in and out of this over-the-top movie. The story was mind-numbing, and the acting was cringe-inducing. While the Japanese people certainly had every right to throw the 1998 Zilla under the bus, the end result of Final Wars is a film only narrowly better than its American rival. I award this movie three inches of loving. Beautiful. Very nice. That's double can, my score. I, Oof. Yeah, and I can, I can jump in here. I'm going to kind of come in a little bit in between these two. I also... Did not like this movie. Uh, it was very long and kind of boring and just this kookiness. I guess if you're into just finding something that's kooky for the sake of being kooky, then you're going to like this. Um, but I don't know. It just, it's, it seems like nonsense. It doesn't seem like the story makes any sense. The editing made it seem like they didn't know what they were trying to say at times. Like one second they're in a cave and the next they're in talking to some twins, Mothra twins or something. And they just transported here and there and exposition here and there. And I, I didn't really understand most of it. And I didn't really care to understand most of it. Um, the fights were good. I did enjoy seeing all the monsters, but I feel like you can do it in, in a smarter, better way than mm -hmm. they did here. So I was going to come in with a two and a half and that kind of puts me in between you two guys. Um, I just didn't. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's funny. We came off of, uh, what was the other one called that we liked? Um, battle all monsters or whatever. Was that the one? The GMK. GMK. Yeah, yeah. That one. Uh, it's funny to come off that one, which is kind of a somewhat similar concept. It's almost like Godzilla started to get to be this franchise where it's just like, how many monsters can we fit in this? Um, we went from that one, which I enjoyed, I thought was like a, a really well done one and, and was engaging, uh, to this one, which just fell like, just like, yeah, just fell off the, fell off a cliff into the ocean. Like, it just like didn't make any sense and I didn't like it. It's like, oh, these two things, the concepts on the face of it are very similar, but the end result is so different. I, yeah, I don't know. And Zach, maybe you can talk a little bit. Or, or you can you can shed some light on it a little bit because I know they chose they kind of chose a director that was a little odd for the movie so maybe that was part of it. See, but, yeah, I don't know. Are you are you good with yours then, Jamie? Yeah, so two and two and a half. I'm done. Yeah, two and a half. So I did not like this movie, and you were kind of just saying it, Jamie. I compared it to the one we just watched previously, which had a really good, I think, like a tight story. It connected with yeah. you know, the Japanese culture, society, their history. You know, it talked about like, you know, the dangers of, um, you know, not forgetting our past and the dangers of nuclear war. This movie didn't have anything like that. Like this movie I also thought that, and I, I did think they made the main character of that one. It just, it was, it's interesting to have one where your main character is this like reporter where you're like, this could go so wrong, but I actually kind of, I thought she was like an interesting, fun character to follow around. And here, you, it's just like, well, who the fuck are these people? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand any of this. Yeah. Too many yeah. characters in this film. So many of them not interesting, except the one, honestly, like the one <laughs> submarine captain. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> where was I saying? Yeah. And it's just not a good movie. So there wasn't like any kind of like second, like deeper meaning to this film. It was like an hour of just them trying to construct a story of these aliens that are here. And now we have to fight them. And then the second hour was, let's see how many people we can have Godzilla fight in like right. 30 seconds and just get to the end real quick. And it's, it, it is weird that they that they chose not to have Godzilla for so long. It, it was it was a huge mistake. And I think they could have fixed this movie by cutting out like, well, one, they could have cut out the entire alien subplot because well, not even a subplot, just the whole alien plot in general. That was well, not one needed. Thing, one, it, thing, <laughs> one thing I will say is I do – I like the concept of it being like uh, – the Godzilla is our enemy, but 
at times we may need Godzilla to save us, even though it, like Godzilla will turn around and destroy us. But our only chance for survival is to have Godzilla come and destroy these monsters for us. Like I like that concept because I'm not sure it's always done that way. Like Godzilla is sometimes a hero. This is kind of like a he's a hero only when there's a bigger bad guy for it to fight. But once that bad guy's gone, we once again have to do battle with Godzilla. Yeah, it's kind of like that, you know, teaming up with your enemy just to fight <laughs> You know, right. another enemy. Um, so, th I mean, I think that's interesting, but it didn't, it, that was like such a minor part of the movie. It was like 20% of the film is regarding that. Everything else is just like nutso aliens and like fights. Basically. Yeah, I think a stronger film would have been taking out the aliens, them having some sort of maybe like a catastrophic, catastrophic event, maybe even keep the asteroid, right? Maybe an asteroid hits the earth, right, yeah. awakens all these other kaiju, all these other monsters that come yeah. out of the ground. So then they're like, oh, we have to go get Godzilla no matter what. Our weapons can't fight these things. And then the movie has more thought out fights. This the is fights, writing itself. It is, is writing, writing itself. itself. The fights in yeah. this movie were awful. Like it, they weren't even fights. Godzilla would punch someone and then shoot their head off. Godzilla would grab the cobweb, launch him into the stratosphere. Godzilla would, what, rip the heads off of Kaiser Ghidorah and then stomp on him. Like it's just – he threw, I think, Hedorah – not Hedorah, um, the uh, the lobster one, uh, 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 Ebera. I think he threw mm. that into Hedorah, right? <laughs> and then, then just yeah. blew him up with his fire, with his atomic can, breath. Can I quickly do a, a an ointment special topical do it. comparison right here? So this is like watching the XFL. Like you're starved <laughs> for you're starved for football. You're like, okay, you watch it. You turn it on. You're like, all right, this isn't very good. This isn't very <laughs> very good football. Um, but maybe it could be a minor league. Maybe maybe we can figure out who's good in this, and then we'll have like some better people in the NFL. I feel like this could have been – it's like the XFL. You watch it, and you're like, oh, that monster didn't work. That monster didn't work. But then I see that lion guy running around, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I'm into that. Bring him up to the big leagues. And now we get Godzilla versus that lion monster as the next movie. All what right. Do you guys think? There's a question for you then, Jamie. Who would you, pr who would you promote and who would you relegate? Oh boy, let me go back to that list we had of who is. Okay, first of all, Zilla gone. Mini Zilla, Mini Zilla, get out of here. Manila, get out, get out of here too. I don't like him. Um, I did like, right? I did like the souped up um, Gigan with his like chainsaws. Let's promote him. Uh, uh, I think um, Godzilla is obviously in Mothra. I love. I love Mothra. What really about cool. the spider? No, Kumonga. not into the spider. Yeah, relegate. Come on, it's just a spider. No, no, no. I, I do like the, the little shellfish guy. I like the lion monster guy. Um, <laughs> King Caesar. Um, Hedora. What which one's Hedora? That was like the, the slimy octopus slime thing. Yeah. Nah. I do yeah. like Rodin. I like Rodin. He was flying around. Yeah, Rodin was cool. pretty sweet. I like Anguirus. He was cool. Um, but he was no um, whatever. Baragon. Uh, Baragon. Tamakuras. Um, and yeah, and then obviously... Um, Kaiser Ghidorah is a uh, is going to be promoted as well. Were you on Kamakura's? Which one's that one? The dragonfly. Nah, get him out of here. That <laughs> thing. That <laughs> thing enough. weighed twenty thousand tons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right? flying. And it's flying around. Get, get yeah. this. And the and the series before it, and the era before it, it only weighed two thousand eight hundred metric tons. So this thing balked up big time. And wow. then the next. After that, back down to 2,800. So his walk and weight and fighting weight is vastly he, different. He's the Christian Bale of Kaiju. He surely is. So I, I, I had stepped in there with a little uh, <clears throat> Oitman topical special. But Zach, I'm not sure. Did we get our, Did you get your rating? I did no? not. I've got only like two more things to say. It's just Go not ahead. a good movie. This has more of a feel of like one of those cheap sci-fi films. Except it's too long. If they could have cut the aliens, made it 30 minutes shorter, I think I would have given this a solid six. But <laughs> because of that, and it's not a – even though it was like direct to DVD in most places, it's still – it's not a freaking sci-fi movie. It's a, supposed to be a Godzilla film. Terrible. I'm giving it a solid two – Too. Okay, that's it. That's it. <laughs> it sounded like you were going to say something else with it. I know. I wouldn't be. I'm going to say tell you. I would not be. While while we've been making fun of Kyle and he's not even here to defend himself, we've said I was going to. You know, he's embarrassed because he's going to give this a higher score. 
I think he might come in the highest. Oh, he's definitely coming oh, in the highest. He probably. liked it. He yeah. said he enjoyed it. I don't think he. I don't think he really did. I think he was. I think he was kind of doing that tongue in cheek. Like it's. It's like stupid, insane. You saying he's well, yeah, I do think, We'll find out. No, I think he'll. I think he'll come in a little higher than us, though. For we for will that reason. Find out right now. Right now, maybe. And there it was, and that's where it um, gets inserted. Before his, yeah, before his rating, we're at a two point two five. It's <laughs> low. I mean, it's a bad movie. It's that's like pretty low. I, I, yeah, I like Zach's. I think Zach is right. We didn't need the aliens. Actually, this could have been a, a decent movie if they all had some other trigger event where they all emerge out of the soil or wherever they come from and they start wreaking havoc because of, you know, something, a meteor hits the earth or, and awakes them or whatnot. Just have a different reason for them to show up. You can cut out all of that junk with the aliens. You can cut out all the mutants and that organization, the yeah. M organization, and just go back to what Godzilla is all about. Godzilla yeah. for one, because you missed like an hour of Godzilla. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. I'm gonna get into some trivia. Is that I? Yep. Oh wait, wait, wait. Love it or hate it. Love it or hate it. Oh, sorry. Love it or hate it. What do we want first? Love it. Uh, Wasn't it love, love it or it. suck yeah. it? Love it or no, suck I think it. It's love it or, love it or hate it. It changes. <laughs> yeah, it changes let's do, weekly. Let's do love it first. I love it. This is from. Dai Kaiju 54 from August 1st, 2007. Godzilla Final Wars rules. When I first heard of Godzilla Final Wars and a lot of stuff about the movie I was reading online, much of it very negative, then I found out the director was young and his favorite Godzilla movie was Godzilla vs. Gigan. I grew up watching these 1970s Godzilla movies and they were not that good. So I, like many other kaiju fans, began posting negative GFW postings on the net. Then I saw GFW at the Pickwick Theater in Chicago, Illinois. Mm. Wow, was I ever surprised. This was the best Godzilla movie I had ever seen. Why were people saying such bad things about a movie they had never seen, myself included? The fact is, is that Godzilla Final Wars was downright awesome. IMO GFW is at least three times better than GMK. And because of this movie, I bought myself a 52 inch big screen TV (laughs) (laughs) so I could watch the movie Uh, at home and try uh, and get that theater feeling 10 out of 10. Did he like put a blanket over the screen from one edge (laughs) to the one edge, put it behind him? (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you. That might be an 11 out of 10. He bought a TV for this movie. <laughs> a 52-inch big screen. Wow. I wonder, if he, I wonder what his Amazon rating. Can you find out if he rated the TV really on Amazon? Big screen, though. No, I don't consider that big screen. <laughs> nah, it's pretty small, actually. <laughs> well, it depends what kind of room you got it in. You know, That's true. Good good point. Bathroom, it's, big If it's screen. in the bathroom, that's a huge screen. It's a huge that's screen. A huge. <laughs> I, that's IMAX. That's right. <laughs> this guy bought a TV and watched it in the bathroom. He loved it so much. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When was, that, when was that review written, Zach? 2007, when we graduated high school. See, that's crazy. Because I was, before this, I was looking at Google reviews on this. Yeah. And I, like you had mentioned, we're reviewing it right now, but there have also been like four or five reviews in the past month on this movie as well. So something's happening out there in the Godzilla world. And I they don't might, know what They might have had like a big uh, marathon showing or something at some movie theaters, which it sounds like this is what that. That guy did it in Chicago, went to a marathon or something. They could be. I just think it's really strange. Because um, isn't there another one coming out? What do you like? I Godzilla. Mean, aren't con- they working on like Kong versus, versus Godzilla? Godzilla? Yeah, it comes yeah, out this so year, this fall. Yeah, so they're probably doing maybe some uh, marathons and stuff. So that was love it. Are we ready for hate it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm ready. I hate it. This is from. Nice Cubes, December okay. 2005. What the hell were they thinking? Well, what can I say? It sure is different. It gave me a headache, actually. My wife and I watched it, and here are a few thoughts from a longtime Godzilla fan. I know some G fans will hate this, but the truth is this film is a mess. It would have been better without any kaiju, thus sparing us 
the insipid return of the truly awful 70s style of Godzilla fights. This is the Godzilla film to the attention deficit generation. Those who think rapid editing and one-liners make a good film. The good. We both liked Don Fry and the lead alien. Both seemed to be in on the joke. Some of the visuals and action were well done. The bad. Well, we hated how Godzilla looked. My least favorite suit since the god-awful G84. With that version's ping-pong eyes and buck teeth, my wife said she would have even preferred the GMK beer belly Godzilla over this one. This suit was an anorexic and had a duckbill face. Truly a disaster. Plus, the kaiju fights were too fast and the monsters never looked more than guys in suits. More like an Ultraman kaiju than a modern Godzilla film. All in all, it's like the director took the Matrix, X-Men, Independence Day, and all the bad elements of the 60s and 70s G films, put them in a blender, hit Puri for a long time. All in all, a pretty lame Godzilla film. No, wait, it doesn't even seem to be a Godzilla film for hardcore fanboys and those with high tolerance for pain only. One out of ten. Solid. I think we we did fall in the middle of that one. We weren't so against it. He he was nitpicking there, especially on the suits. I thought I thought the Godzilla yeah. had some pretty nasty looking arms. You know, he could really right. do some damage. I mean, tore off the heads of who was it? Kaiser Godira. Godira. Yeah, or Godira. That was awesome. But I yeah, that, I don't think yeah. the suits were that bad in this. I mean, no. Huh. Is it I Paris like or FX- Paris? On a blender. Oh, puree. Puree. P- puree. Okay. What did I say? Potpourri. Potpourri. <laughs> All right. Words. That's it. That, that's love it and hate it. There you go. Um, let's get some trivia going. All right. So the release of Godzilla Final Wars coincided with the 50th anniversary of the Godzilla franchise. And as such, a variety of actors and giant monster characters from previous Godzilla films made appearances in the film. And thank God for that because it made uh, Phantom Zone pretty easy. Uh, Ryuhei Akitamura accepted the offer to direct the film due to his being unsatisfied with the Godzilla films of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. He said, I love Godzilla movies back in the 70s, but not so much the ones released since then. Godzilla movies back in the 70s were never just monster movies. There were always messages and themes that reflected the time and the world within which they were made, and they combined this so well with straight up entertainment. They lost that touch in the 80s. And I, I just gotta say, after everything we've talked about here, that being the quote by the director of this is pretty nuts, given we're talking about how he, like they lost touch a little bit with talking about like current events. I was going like, to say the movie things that are relevant to the world takes place in the future, so <laughs> yeah, about mutants and aliens. It's yeah. like, wait, what? So you you thought they didn't deal enough with real world issues, and so you said it into twenty forty four about <laughs> aliens and mutants? Like Jesus, just a really weird quote in that in that uh, sense. Uh, r- roughly, it cost about uh, twenty million dollars to make this movie, and it was so it was the most expensive Toho produced Godzilla film of all time. It ended up being the least attended Godzilla film in twenty nine years, and was a big box office Oof. disappointment. As a treat to diehard Godzilla fans, Zilla, the monster from the mushroom lined American Godzilla film, appeared in the film and uh, gets beaten. Uh, they, do you know why they call it Zilla? And this is why I include it in the trivia. Why? Because. There was a quote by Toho Shogo, the head of Toho Shogo uh, Tomiyama, about it. Said so they took the god out of Godzilla. Oh, so they called it Zilla. How about that? And now it's uh, now it's actually considered a member of Toho's roster of kaiju, which is kind of funny. Didn't they say something similar to that to 1998's version too? What? They took the god out of Godzilla. I think that's what it was, yeah. That's what I'm saying. They, that's oh. what they were talking about, the 1998. Oh, okay. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So that's, but that's why they called the monster that was based on that movie Godzilla, because it took the god out of Godzilla. Uh, the 28th Godzilla, This was the 28th Godzilla film, and it marked the final use of Toho's big pool water tank. So I believe we watched, I think it was um, Godzilla versus King Kong, or King Kong versus Godzilla, that, uh, that first used the pool for in the Godzilla films. This was the last one. It was the one that Toho had used for all its big uh, 
ocean special effects since 1960s storm over the Pacific. And that's why it was constructed. It was 88 meters wide, 72 meters long. And uh, it was last used for this film on September 7th and was demolished in October 13th. And they just said it was basically no longer tenable to use it because advances in computer graphics made the use of the big pool um, obsolete. And then, okay. For casting what I've Don Fry, aka Lieutenant Gorner, was a star in early, 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 extra early UFC. He actually won UFC eight. So the eighth ever UFC. Now we're obviously wow. we you watch UFC and it's like two hundred and forty something or something crazy. And so what other UFC stars turned actors would have been good here? You may not recognize all these names unless you are big time UFC. So I, I may have to help you out a little bit. Getting the Google ready. Let's do this. Right. Right. Quentin Rampage Jackson. Now he was an actor in the A Team remake. That was 2010. And since then, he's been in a couple other things. But what about Quentin Rampage Jackson? Huh. And this movie, it, does it? Do they have to be monsters because they're fighters, or it, like anybody in the whole film? No, I mean the, the mutants were fighters too. He could be a cool, pretty cool mutant. I think that's probably right. He could have been the bad guy, but then he turns out to be a good guy at the end. He could have uh, played Manila. He could have played Manila. That's true. What about Gina Carano? So I don't know if did anyone ever see the 2011 film Haywire? No. So Haywire was Steven Soderbergh, and he do, uh, often does this. He works with people or or, or non professional actors. So he made I think he made a film with like a porn star, uh, where she played an escort, and then uh, this one you know UFC fighter Gina Carano, uh, you know played the main character in Haywire. Uh, it was actually a, a pretty good film. And then she, since then, she's been in Fast and Furious 6. Uh, I think she was a bad guy in that. Then she was in Heist and Deadpool. Huh. So she's pretty big now. She's been in a couple of the kick, new kick, newer kickboxer films and stuff like that. Was she in um, Star Wars? Because I'm seeing a picture right? of her at the red carpet for Star Wars Rise of Skywalker premiere. She may have been for all I've I know. I've seen her at one for Mandalorian. Are you? Oh, so maybe, she, maybe she's in Mandalorian. But anyways, who would Gina Carano be? Uh, I mean, I guess the one chick, right? <laughs> there was technically two. Two? Either. They were sisters. Which brings me up to the next one, Ronda Rousey, probably <laughs> the most famous of the UFC turned actors since she has actually been in a number of major motion pictures at this point. Obviously, so oh, they're going to have we're going to have to fight Entourage. each other, right? She was the chick in the Mandalorian that he meets in the village with the child. Oh, my God. Okay. okay. Sorry. Topical. Go ahead. Uh, so, yeah, she was in Entourage. She was in Expendables 3. She was in Furious 7. She was in – she's going to be the main character in Roadhouse. I'm reading that she's going to be the main character in Roadhouse. This is Ronda Rousey. So I feel like Ronda Rousey and Gina Carano are going to be the sisters, and but they're also going to be like – they're going to probably like fight with bazookas and sh stuff, probably. Right? Sure. I'd say so. Right. And then our main <laughs> character, Randy Couture. And you're like, who? Oh, and then I'm like, uh, did you never see Expendables? Did you never see Cradle to the Grave? Did uh, you no, never see. I know who Randy Couture is. The later Scorpion King films. Randy this Couture. Guy, he was an MMA guy? Yeah. yeah. UFC Hall of Famer. Legend of the Octagon, Randy Couture. He looks uh, like a guy, right? A white guy. He, do you think he could have been the captain? Maybe he takes over the role. If he grew a mustache out, sure. Yeah, he looks kind of like Mario, right? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it would make a good captain. And the last one, our boy, Ed Harris, little known fact. Uh, big time UFC fighter, especially early on. Uh, lately, he hasn't fought too much. I think he only fought twice last year. So um, kind of like reducing the number of bouts. Currently 86-0-1, uh, the draw. Uh, that's when he fought a robot that was built <laughs> in his likeness. 
and they fought to a draw, which makes sense. Um, but he obviously parlayed his uh, UFC career into a major motion picture deal for the Abyss, where James Cameron said, bring me a UFC fighter now. That's his exact quote for that film. So where would Ed Harris be? He would have been a great captain. That's probably right. He'd have been a good captain. Um, I think he could have done. He could have been the the, the like the like a bad like ma- major alien character. Like he wouldn't yep. do X, but if they kind of redid how that story unfolded, he'd make a good evil alien. Yeah, like if the aliens time. came to Earth and they needed to look like someone, like why wouldn't they pick like the most handsome person they could? That's true, and it was uber famous. Person they'd be, uh, <laughs> like if they wanted uh, the humans to trust them, they'd pick Ed Harris probably. Yeah, and then I think third, so you're saying like Captain, uh, obviously handsome, handsome alien, uh, or I think the third is obviously Godzilla. I think that's the third choice for what he'd play. That's correct. Yeah. All right, and then gonna finish it off with a little Phantom Zone. Engage the Phantom. Phantom's engaged, sir. So I took the easy way out. I'm sorry, guys. I was just, I was, last minute, I was like, Phantom Zone, gotta get it. And I was like, okay, who's in this? And obviously they have a whole bunch of people who've been in Godzilla films. They were doing all kinds of cameos, all kinds of stuff. The UN secretary is played by a man, Akira uh, Takarada. He was in a whole bunch of Godzilla films, but he was also in... Latitude Zero as Dr. Ken Toshiro. I think I've even used him before in that capacity. So from there, follow whatever the track is. Guys, go back and listen to um, Latitude Zero. Great episode, I'm sure. I don't remember, but I'm sure it was great. And uh, you know, follow that Phantom Zone. And especially if that Phantom Zone in Latitude Zero ends with me saying, oh, we've already done this for this episode, go back and listen to that episode. And then if that ends with it saying, oh, you know, we did this in a previous episode, go back and listen to that episode until you find out when it actually got to the abyss. Or until you listen to every episode. Yeah, yeah. Just listen to all the episodes again. Was that the episode Kyle loved that had like the giant rats flying around or something like that in it? It was a giant, uh, giant lion monster i it believe was that was latitude like that. zero yeah it was a crazy film i also liked it a lot but it's crazy i don't know i guess it was kind of crazy in the way that this is crazy except crazy in kind of like a fantastical funny way i don't know did you guys uh, mention the tagline for this what was it earth outnumbered out monstered outdone <laughs> beautiful classic all right, that's it for me. All right. Next. The, the order would be Alex. You got any uh, news or anything else you want to do tonight? <sighs> you guys think I was actually looking up news? D- did we talk about that submarine and Titanic? thing hitting it i don't think so i think you may have mentioned that i know i don't think off, it's really air, news but air. i guess it's it, it still keeps coming up in my news cycle so i think i have to discuss it so um the titanic which sunk what 100 years ago almost now over 100 years i don't know over over, over 100 years. over um <clears throat> I guess uh, people still go down to visit it and they use little submersibles to get down that far. And recently, one of the small submersibles struck the Titanic after, mind you, it's already sunk down the bottom of the ocean. But it's a pretty big deal, I guess, because there's been court battles going on over this now. Um, For whatever reason, the Titanic now is protected by the National oceanic and atmospheric administration the noaa here in america um and you might know them because they also check weather and currents and water and all that kind of stuff for whatever reason this is a really big deal and the people that struck the titanic didn't notify the correct parties of it um so i'm not for sure exactly what they're trying to argue on court or why this is. i'm still trying to get to the bottom of that but there's ongoing court battles because of this and their obligation to provide a copy of the accident report did not happen. And I think this 
all started like a month ago on January 8th of this year, 2020. Um, I do know what they're trying to do is they're trying to get into the Titanic to get um, one of their wireless telegraph machines because they were some of the first ones made at the time um, where they could transmit messages across the ocean wirelessly. And I think that's – I know that's what they're trying to get. But I don't know why this all has serious – court issue so maybe one of you smart guys can look into that and tell me that because i don't understand what the deal with this is i ain't a lawyer he ain't no yeah. lawyer you heard it here yeah. first. i ain't no lawyer yeah i don't know i was getting in there um other than that nothing really too crazy going on in submarine news but back in 2015 our guy don fry um was getting into a little spat with someone jamie had already mentioned ronda rousey nice around this time in 2015 ronda rousey was saying that she could probably beat a man in a fight in ufc and our boy don fry who would probably never hit a woman um, <laughs> <laughs> said uh well do you want me to quote it verbatim or just give you uh, yeah, i'll just say the short story about it he was very annoyed with her making claims about fighting a man in the UFC and then said she just needs to shut the hell up and fight Cyborg, who was another popular female MMA fighter at the time because they hadn't fought. And then they said after that, then they can talk about what a real fighter can do. So our boy Don Fry back in 2015 made headlines. I wish wow. I would have known about him before because he sounds like he's a pistol. It's pretty funny. And then around this time that this movie came out in 2004, submarine news. <clears throat> there was a Canadian submarine that caught fire after it left the harbor, not once, but twice. Um, sadly, one person from the Canadian forces did die. I guess he was a lieutenant. Um, they had already surfaced and they were flying him to a helicopter and he died, so it's sad. Uh, but they uh, they did a full investigation because the submarine caught fire actually twice. I know it's something we kind of always joke around with and wanting to see in submarine movies is the, if there's a fire and how to start and so forth. But what happened here, if you guys are interested, um, poor insulation um, around uh, the, some of the power cables. And um, that led to arcing as well as seawater was penetrating some of the joints um around the external hall which would then also get into the poor insulated wires and cause more issues so that's how two fire started on the sub and i guess this is a pretty big deal for canadian sub forces back in 2004 because i found a pretty good amount of articles on this so that's the quick rundown on that and that's all i have thank you goodbye nice all right i for one learned a lot good a lot of interesting news in there. You also mentioned something that's going to come up in my little segment here. Tube 3, ready to fire, sir. Commence the countdown. Give it to me. So, during my movie month, we did a uh, little bit of trivia, some Brahm facts to learn a little bit about myself. Well, we're in the middle of Zach's movie month, so how about we do a little introduction to Zach by playing Three Truths, One Zach Fact. Nice. Mm. All right. So these are all very true, of course, but one of them is a Zach fact. So I'm going to I'm gonna let everyone know here. Uh, we'll, we'll have Jamie guess because I assume that Alex might know uh, the answer mm. to this, uh, but also play along at home. Uh, let us know down in the comments. Smash that like button. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to us uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. And let us know which one of these you think is a Zach fact. All right. Zach had a cyst on one of his testicles. So, sorry. I'm Wait. trying to guess which one is a Zach fact or which one's – and which one's – because there's three real ones and one fake one. Is that what you're saying? There's three – yeah. There's There's three truths, one Zach fact. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, cyst on testicle. Got it. All right. Oh, God. Why would you air Sorry, that? Sorry, hold on. Which <laughs> <testicle>? laundry. <laughs> Maybe that's the Zach fact. Okay. okay. 
See, that's making me think it's a Zach fact because you don't seem to want to answer which testicle it was. Uh, I'll tell you, I had epididymitis. I don't know if that's what Zach's referring to here, but I had uh, <laughs> had, had a very similar situation on my left testicle mm. to answer your question, Jamie. I'll air that dirty laundry any that's day not, of the week. It's not an answer to my question, though. Whatever, whatever. let's go. <laughs> Number two, Zach has been hit in the face with a golf club. Number Ooh. three. Okay. Okay. Wow, that that would hurt. <laughs> was it was it full swing? Do we know that, uh, or did it just like he opened it, the closet and it fell on his face? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. If Zach is comfortable adding any extra information. He, he is he is allowed to okay. to help deceive. I will comment afterwards. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Number three. Zach's first kiss occurred during the film Titanic. 1996, graduated high school 2007. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> you doing some number crunching over there? I'm crunching I'm crunching the numbers. I didn't say, oh, it's not they didn't say theater. Oh. Yeah. would have been like Oh. Okay, oh good. All right. Good one. Good one. <laughs> okay. And gotcha. number 4, Zach has masturbated at a friend's house. Why? Interesting. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I I am going. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with four as the Zach fact because I feel like the other ones make sense and are believable <laughs> and are pretty specific. Masturbating at a friend's house is an interesting one to throw in there as one of your truths. When there's so many other truths you could choose <laughs> from the many truths in your life, li life, why would you choose that one to <laughs> put on the podcast? Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I've been hit in the face with a golf club. I'm going to say Zach was not hit in the face with a golf club. Yeah, we never know. It could be that he was hit in the arm with a golf club, but he just changed it to face to make it a Zach fact. And Alex, if you All want right. to take a stab, go for it. What are the options? Titanic. Just on the testicles. Hit in the face with kiss. a golf club. Yeah. First kiss First during kiss the film during Titanic. Titanic. And masturbating, masturbating at a friend's house. <laughs> and one of these is fake. One of these is yeah. a Zach fact. I I don't I don't see Zach getting hit in the face with the golf club. All right, that's two votes Pro for probably, the golf probably club. Probably had a, probably had a little cyst on the testicle, like a little baby cyst. It's very you know? very yeah, common. He, he, okay, he obviously had a cyst on the testicle, so we can throw that one out. Okay. All right. Next set of questions. <laughs> <laughs> nope that was that was the oh, set the, that's, that's it. it that's, that's it. it are we gonna make listeners wait till next week to find out the answer <laughs> uh <laughs> i'll leave that one up to zach uh i'd say they have to, at this point in time they have to uh you know subscribe to our patreon if they want to hear the answer oh. I'm just <laughs> The answer is a Patreon patron only <laughs> answer. It's the hundred dollar uh, donate. It's the hundred dollar. <laughs> yeah, uh, and if anyone it. tries to leak it online, we're gonna we're gonna take it down. We're gonna hit you with our lawyers. <laughs> no, no. Zach, let's, do, you want, um, do you want to inform us? Yeah, I'll talk you guys through these. So, oh god, don't. I'll just, start. <laughs> let's I'll start with the cyst on the testicles. Yeah. So you know, about eight years ago, I found a lump on my right testicle and went to the doctor, got it checked out, had to have an ultrasound. Which, if you guys. Listeners out there, if you know what an ultrasound is, having that on a um, male in his early 20s scrotum happen was very interesting. Um, I'm right then, there with you, man. And then I had to uh, – I chose to have it removed. So that was one of the first time I ever had surgery in my life was to have the cyst removed. Um, Miracle of medicine right there. So that was a – that's a truth. Uh, back when I was in fifth grade, I was standing outside showing uh, one of my friends at the time – how to swing a golf club because I was oh, taking golf shoot. lessons back then. And I was standing behind him and he just took two steps backwards for whatever reason and swung it in his backswing and clocked me right in the mouth. Oh. I got four stitches and I'm surprised you guys haven't noticed. I have a blump, a bump on my, on my lip, on my lower lip. And that's from where my stitches were. I just figured it was something else, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was that. Uh, I saw Titanic twice in theaters with a really good friend of mine. Um, I did not kiss him. I did not mm. 
have my first kiss during Titanic at any point <laughs> no. in time. And um, I will end my answers with that. Okay, okay there we go. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Alex. Perfect. Might want to scrub down. Might want to scrub down some of your old furniture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring it home. Uh, no, Zach. <laughs> bring it home, Zachary. Uh, is that the end of your? Is that the end of your segment, Ben? It's the end oh, of the so segment. Now we, get, now we get real Zach facts. All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Zach Fax, it's Zach Fax. When you're going, when you're going down, 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 get your Zach Fax. When you're going <laughs> down. Zach Fax. <Fax. laughs> <Zach Fax. laughs> the film was in development for over 10 years as the director was trying to work around all these different kaiju schedules to get them to appear. It wasn't <laughs> until his intern told him that they're not real that the movie got made. <laughs> Zach wow, Fax. that that in turn is worth his weight in gold. <laughs> he made his salary that that, uh, that day unpaid. Un, his, yeah, oh, exactly. unpaid intern. He was an unpaid intern for ten years. <laughs> they gave him a uh, Starbucks gift card. Fact, uh, Zach. Fact number two: uh, the original ending was supposed to be a twist as the audience found out the entire plot and action was only the little boy playing with his toys the entire time. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's like a, it was like a North situation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That movie North. Right. I actually think that would have been a better ending. No. It would never, <laughs> that's, never, that's never a good ending. <laughs> and the final Zach fact for the evening... Godzilla Final Wars spawned the creation of Godzilla Final Wars Con, where fans from around the world get together in costumes and fight until only one is left standing and they can do whatever they please with the other. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's even worse than the other Zach Fact you had. <laughs> Zach Facts. The non sorry, the non Zach Fact you had. <laughs> there like it a, is. It's like furries. There it is. Oh, Final Wars. Final Wars. <laughs> final oh, comments? Oh, how I wish you were the final movie. Is, is, is there, yeah, is final there a reason episode why? Final movie month. Is there a reason why this one was picked? Is it only because it's got a submarine in it? This one was picked. Sorry. Kyle and I were talking. I, uh, I 100%, I asked you this. I think I asked you this exact question, didn't I? Did you? I asked why the, I asked why this one was picked. Is it only simply because it has a submarine in it? Did, because I was confused as to why we ended up watching it. This one was because of the submarine. Yes. Yeah. Um, this one, I mean, I knew it was like we had already watched one of the Millennium series, but I had never seen this one either. <laughs> so when, when I found out online from the um, Godzilla subreddit, shout out to the Godzilla subreddit listeners we got out there, uh, who did a great job helping with me, helping me find out all these Godzilla films that have submarines in them. So we added this one in the mix, and it was a swing and a miss, I think. And the rest is history. But as I say. next week is the newest Hollywood film, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. It is a direct sequel to the uh, Godzilla, the Hollywood Godzilla film before it, Godzilla. So, yeah, watch it be a direct adaptation of this film. Like all of a sudden we're watching <laughs> it and there's like mutants and aliens and it's set in 2044 and we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but that would be that would be bad. It doesn't have very good IMDb uh, ratings. So King of the Monsters, kind of nervous. Yeah, six point oh, one, just okay. It's no, awesome. The first one, the okay. first one before it is good. Um, the second one, you know, hits it into. Um, Overdrive. So, oh, you're right. Did not get good reviews. It's good, it, but it not bad have. enough for uh, no. Forty two percent. It needs to be below forty to qualify for bad movie. So four point two zero. We got we, what? we got about two minutes left. What? I think Alex was that right? Do we have two minutes left before we have to leave? Yeah, say what you uh, got to say. Hurry up. Two, no, no, it two minutes left. I mean, we can just stop it. We can just stop it. No, 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 no. Two minutes left, right, Alex? Yep. <laughs> Let's yep. quick. King of the Monsters, last Godzilla movie you might ever have to watch, guys. 
what do you think your your reviews are going to be for this? Give your pre ratings to see if you'll if you'll strike lightning in next week's episode. Three. Uh, hmm. I'm going to say five. Point. I'm going to say two five. yeah. I'm going to say six. I'm going to say seven and a half. Oh, have you seen it before? Yes. Thank you for listening to Submersion. Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. If you like what you heard, please leave us a rating wherever you listen. Want to interact with us? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also love to get messages from all of you. If you have a suggestion, a comment, or just anything you'd like to share, please email us at maceaststudios at gmail.com.